There have been some celebrations in Slovenia for the past days, <laughs> and, and today it's a big day for them as well, uh, and not just for them. Now, before we start, I would like to I would like to ask uh, Paul House and Gabri Elder to give us a welcome uh, in this place. Paul, please. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Helena. Uh, word in languages. Thank you. I'd like to say in language, Jumboro uh, Boro Maramba, good morning. Yilingalangbu, Ibabangu Wogabu, Migaibu, Deranil Bang Mayin. Ladies and gentlemen, young men, young women, distinguished guests, Mick Shane, Nyari Njamali, Nyamri, Wogalu, Nunawu, Wallabaloa, Mujigang, Yamangbu, Jayandu. So my respects to Nyamri, Wogalu, Nunawu, Wallabaloa, elders past and present. Nyari in Jamarabu, Muji Gangu, Nurumbanji Gugu, Ninyi Yiridu. My respects to all people from other parts of the country here today. Nyambri Nunuwu, Mayin Gai Mbanya Ninyo Gai Nurumbangu Dara. Nyambri and Nunuwu people welcome you all to country. So yes, Jumburu Marambang, good morning. My name is Paul Hauser and I was born here at the centre of my ancestral country at the old Canberra Hospital. And I also like to acknowledge my other multiple Aboriginal ancestries from, from the region. And in terms of this protocol, important protocol, uh, welcome to the country. Uh, they, they existed uh, in pre-post contact times in, into uh, modern times today. So I acknowledge uh, the Pajon Gandangara speaking people, my ancestry, from my mother's side. And also the Wiradjuri speaking people uh, from my mother's side as well. So. As always, uh, I could talk for a long time about country. Uh, uh, Nurumbangu uh, or Dara is what we call land, country. Nurumbangu or Dara. I can talk a, a lot about country and how important it is to all of us, uh, not just uh, Aboriginal people, but, but it does come back to our ancestors. Our ancestors uh, laid a strong foundation in terms of looking after land and country uh, for thousands and tens of thousands of years. Uh, long before the arrival of, of Europeans to our ancestral lands. And so the values and the interests and the priorities that our ancestors uh, had in, a, in the landscape uh, was very important. So it's just not about the land as well, the land, the land, the plants, the animals, it's all connected, not just environmentally, but also spiritually. So our ancestors have a very strong uh, connection uh, to the land uh, spiritually and also what we call sky country. Uh, so basically everything uh, we see on the land uh, is reflected from the universe, the sky, in uh, our philosophy, our ideology, our beliefs, our religion. So as you know, Aboriginal people, uh, our ancestors, uh, and our broader Aboriginal family ancestry, right across the country is, is, is powerful and compelling. It goes back over 65,000 years. Uh, not only the, the oldest living culture in the world, but also the oldest religions in the world, the languages in the world. So basically all the oldest type things in the world, you know, we, we can claim that, and, but we don't, we don't talk about it too much. But it comes naturally to uh, Aboriginal in terms of our understanding. So we talk about the land, the, the important places, and when we do welcome the countries, obviously we do our welcome the countries in the spirit of peace and a desire for harmony for all peoples of the modern ACT and surrounds. And our main aim is to establish an atmosphere of mutual respect. Uh, we, one which the, uh, the Slovenian Embassy has kindly opened its doors to everyone here today, to all people. Uh, an atmosphere uh, uh, based on mutual respect. So uh, talking about respecting the land and the rivers, uh, respect everything living and growing. And I said uh, 65,000 years under the concrete and steel, there's a rich, powerful Indigenous history uh, that we all have a shared responsibility in looking after the country. Very important to us, and we talk about uh, respect, respecting every all people in all parts of the country, and, that, and but not only all people in all parts of the country, respecting the land and the environment and uh, the animals, uh, the plants and animals, including our bees. So in so in language, we have words. Uh, we have words for everything in language. So, but in terms of the bees and honey, so we, in terms of honey, we call honey narang, and, and bees are called daru. So daru narang is honeybee, and also uh, wuru is 
is another word we use for honey as well in language. So powerful words, important words. Uh, so in conclusion, in the spirit of reconciliation, in the spirit of the bees and the honey, I'd like to, uh, on behalf of our matriarchs and patriarchs, welcome everyone to country and look after the land and the rivers, and the land and the rivers will look after you. Wurugawari, uh, thank you very much. Welcome. Sorry, before I go, I just want to uh, play a song on the Yiddiki. The Yiddiki is called the Didgeridoo, and it's a, a song uh, called Daru Narang, which is honey. And I'm just going to need uh, a couple of volunteers to come up with me and share the song with me. Very important song for country. Uh, and some of you may not know uh, the, the Yiddiki, or the Didgeridoo. It's one of the world's oldest musical instruments. It's actually a wind instrument and it comes from our trees, our eucalypt trees. And, and it's made by the, the uh, it's made by the termites and the white ants. <laughs> so I'm gonna actually invite I think I might invite Mick up. Mick's, <laughs> Mick's right here with us. So Mick, We're not Mick's too always I'll come back a good supporter. And I might ask uh, Shane. Shane. Those, uh, That's all right. I'm happy to help with you. The bees. We're in the spirit of the bees. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just going to play a little song on the Yeah, No, I'm sure. He's got any more? Got another pair of sticks? Yeah, yeah, I have. Come and stand beside Shane, it's wonderful. We're just going to uh, play a song. We're going to keep the rhythm, uh, Mick and Shane, and we're going to... <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to... Um, so nice, nice and loud, powerful. That's it. So, Minister, Mr. Gentleman, Minister for Environment and Heritage, uh, very welcome here at our embassy. We'll, I'll ask you later to come here for the official <coughs> launch. And also, Minister Shane Rettenbury for climate change and sustainability. Uh, thank you for being mm -hmm. here as well. Uh, then we also, uh, I would like to, um, to greet all my colleagues, the diplomats, ambassadors from our embassies, especially our special guest today, uh, Pedro Zwallenberg, the ambassador of Switzerland, and Lesvina, his wife. Why special? Because Pedro and his embassy were one of those, uh, together with Sweden, that helped us uh, plan and launch this event, and as you know, they have their big uh, events uh, today there as well. Uh, I also would like to, to specially welcome the, the uh, ACT beekeepers, uh, the, the, the present newly elected uh, uh, president of the association and the former one, Cormac, who will also uh, say some words. And just a special welcome to the Slovenian community as well, who traveled 
from Melbourne and Sydney and also Adelaide. So we, we have here our body consul from for, for Adelaide, uh, for, for South Australia, Mr. Adrian Butterwitz. And we also have the Slovenian um, beekeepers from Melbourne. Mm -hmm. So those who are interested in the Slovenian beekeeping, in AZ uh, hives or whatever, talk to them, find them and talk to them. And uh, really, you really special thank you for coming here today. Now I don't want to take too much time, so I will ask uh, Mr. Rezenberg to, uh, to do his job. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. So can you, can you say some, some words about uh, today and also launch uh, a special program? Um, so thank you so much for coming. Thank you, Ambassador. Good morning, everybody. What a wonderful celebration of the first World Bee Day. And it's great to think we are in Australia at the front of the time zone really kicking this off. Paul, thank you so much for the welcome to country and also for sharing those insights into the many tens of thousands of years of Aboriginal culture in Australia. It's something that we are coming to better know in this country. We've got a long way to go to better understand the true history of Australia and through all sharing of that, we all learn a little bit more today. So thank you, Paul. I thank the ambassador for hosting this event. And it's great to see many of the other ambassadors here today, uh, particularly my friends from the Swiss Embassy. And uh, so really pleased, I didn't realise they had beehives on the roof of the Swiss Embassy. <laughs> the, uh, and so it's great to hear that uh, the spirit of fostering bees in this community is growing and it's great to see our diplomatic community playing a part in that. Canberra is striving to be a sustainable city and there's so much to sustainability. There's all these different angles you can take on it but the importance of bees is one that we cannot underestimate and we are coming to understand it more clearly. I think people are getting a sense of the threat that bees face we all know fundamentally how important bees are, but it's become much clearer in recent times uh, the challenge that bees are facing in our community and the role we can play in helping to protect their important part in our ecosystems. Now we are the bush capital and the government manages twice as many trees as there are people in this city. It's quite an amazing thought. There are literally over you know, well, nearly 800,000 trees in the formal tree estate in Canberra, let alone all the other ones that just occurred actually in the bush. So uh, that is very much part of our city and those trees <coughs> play an integral role in uh, cooling us on those incredibly hot days and we, as we get more hot <coughs> days under climate change, very important. They are, make the city beautiful, but they're again also an important part of making Canberra a bee-friendly city. And I'm very really pleased with the push uh, to make Canberra a more bee-friendly city because we can take deliberate decisions not complex decisions, but deliberate decisions that will make it better for bees in the city. Planting the right trees, making sure that we um, provide those corridors and the sources of nectar and the like. Now both native and European bees are such an important part of our living environment and landscape. And certainly it's hard to imagine where we would be without bees pollinating our trees, not to mention our garden plants, our vegetables, our fruit trees and the like. As part of our need to keep our environment healthy, we need to keep our bee populations healthy. Native bees have played an important part of our indigenous heritage for thousands of years, and they've provided nourishment, medicinal benefits, and form part of the culture, as Paul touched on this morning. And equally, European bees have been a valuable companion to many different European cultures, and now globally. They are so vital in the production of our foods, but in peril as populations collapse globally through the use of pesticides, through disease and infection, and of course, land clearing and the like. Now, it's very easy to say we cannot afford to lose bees and think about it very much from our own perspective because of their important roles as pollinators in our food production, as producers of honey and for their medicinal properties. But they also have in intrinsic value as living beings, and that's saying we should not lose sight of either. Their disappearance is not sustainable, and nor is it acceptable and we must do what we can to prevent this. Now here in Canberra, we've seen some great initiatives from some of our locals, and I'm pleased to see particularly Matthew and Julie here today, who um, have done a lot of work in Canberra and drawing attention to this issue. And on their behalf today, I am delighted to launch the new curriculum for school students, Love Food, Love Bees, Food Security and Sustainable Agriculture. And this is on behalf of ACT4Bs, ACT who are the local group. 
I simply congratulate Julie for her work in teaching our children about nature. It only takes one idea to spark a children's imagination to learn more and be aware of how we can all be a bit more sustainable in a particular way. And we all know what it's like as a kid. You meet that person who tells you something fascinating that can start a lifelong journey. And I hope that through this curriculum material that has been prepared by ACT for Bees, we inspire some more beekeepers in our community, we inspire some scientists, we inspire some young new conservationists who will go out and make a difference through the rest of their lives. This is a collaboration between ACT for Bees, who are a Canberra-based community group, and Cool Australia, a free online sustainability curriculum provider that reaches over 80,000 Australian educators. It focuses on sustainable farming practices, which support healthy soil, healthy pollinators, and biodiversity, as well as explore, exploring the expanding regenerative agriculture industry in Australia. Now, food security is an international problem, and regenerative agriculture is part of the solution. The UK and French governments are responding to issues of food security by funding regenerative agriculture programs. In Australia, major companies, including Fresh Select, are leading changes to more sustainable agricultural methods. They produce 50 million kilograms of fresh vegetables each year for a major supermarket chain and export. Five years ago, testing found their soils were in danger of irreparable damage. And after working on soil improvement and changing agricultural methods, they have better yields and less disease. So it's a demonstration that great environmental practices are not only good for the planet, they're good for the bottom line as well. Now one food issue that students can act on right now is protecting pollinators. Pollinators such as bees and insects, as we've discussed, are essential to food production. Without pollinators, plant and animal based food production systems will face serious decline. Now the EU, and we're here today on one of the EU embassies and several others are here, they have banned the neonicotinoids, which is a widely used bee harming pesticide because of effects on pollinators, insect and bird life. And I've been pleased to see some Australian companies are starting to do this on a voluntary basis and our governments need to catch up. Uh, one in three mouthfuls of food depend on pollination by bees and this includes highly nutritious foods like fruits and nuts. So you just can't underline the importance of this. Uh, so I could probably go on about it all morning, but there's, bee, there's honey tasting to be done and the like. So, uh, I am pleased on behalf of ACT Bees to initially launch the new curriculum and in conclusion simply as the Minister for Climate Change and Sustainability I am acutely aware of the challenges that our city faces now but also as our climate changes and so we need to make sure that we think about this as we prepare our community and we ensure the sustainability of such important parts of our environment such as bees. So, Thank you again, Ambassador, for your hosting of this event, for the Slovenian uh, community for taking the lead in launching World Vida. It is a great initiative, and I'm so proud to be part of it today. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Lesenberry. Um, of course, Slovenia is also uh, a land of um, beekeepers. Uh, we, we say that this is the way of life in Slovenia. So it's plenty to learn about it, and later on we'll put uh, um, a video, and you'll, you, if you have time, you can watch it. Um, now, I will, before asking Minister Gentleman to officially launch today, I would also like, like to ask uh, our friend, supporter, um, um, uh, inevitable, uh, amazing um, uh, person who is also just a former president of the ACT Beekeeping Association, uh, Cormac Farrell, to, to say some words. And I can't say Cormac how, together with, with Carmen Pierce and uh, Canberra Banhani, how grateful we are to, to your support and for the support of all the beekeepers around. Thank you. Look, I'll be really quick because I know we're all standing up. <laughs> One of the things I love about bees is how it connects people to the landscape. And we heard about that from the minister just recently. Um, we produce, I think, in Belconnen, where I keep a lot of my hives, there are, the ACD government has a peak flowering period in their street trees, 20,000 trees flowering in the Belconnen area. And that's something that the ACD government has produced through the landscape and provides corridor and food for pollinators all through. 
it's a wonderful thing. And that's not people's gardens, that's just the street trees providing this important resource for not just for bees, for butterflies, bats, even the bogong moths that come in every year. They are also pollinators. So it connects you to the landscapes in a wonderful way. And I think one of the things we can learn from Indigenous Australians is that deeper connection to the landscape. And that's something I think we all should try and reflect on. The other thing though, it connects us to people. I've met so many wonderful people through beekeeping. It's really fun. Um, the person who actually started this whole caper with embassies keeping bees is Carmen, Carmen Mitchell Pierce. She's here today. She's the head beekeeper for this embassy, but she's also my mentor. When I, in beekeeping, it's a lot of details. You find that you'll they'll do something and you go, oh, I, don't, I, I don't know what's going on here. She's one of the people I go to to ask um, for advice and support. And through that, I've then become a competent beekeeper myself. I wouldn't call myself an expert. That takes a, a lifetime. I think maybe her dad uh, is probably an expert. <laughs> I'm certainly not. But I've been able to support other embassies to get involved and I've been able to meet the diplomatic community, which is, has been a really amazing and lovely thing. I've been able to, to meet the Slovenians, which are wonderful people and kind of fun and they have a fun <laughs> attitude to life. I've also met the Swiss ambassador, <laughs> uh, who is, is an amazing beekeeper and has actually taught me things from the European approach to beekeeping because he's quite an experienced beekeeper himself. And later on today will be the Swedish embassy, which are just beginning their beekeeping journey and it's really, really fun to see through their eyes how, how beekeeping in Australia works. So it's this wonderful connections you get through beekeeping that I really enjoy about it. And also the fascination of the bees themselves. So I'm a botanist by trade, so it's one of the things I'm always fascinated by. So thank you so much, Helena, for bringing World Bee Day to Australia. It is just this most incredible thing. And I, I think we, we literally have standing room only throughout the entire area here. So sorry about the crush. Uh, we're, we're too popular for our own good. <laughs> Now, just the last word about the beekeepers. There were the beekeepers in Slovenia who actually came out with this initiative for the World Bee Day uh, because uh, they were really concerned about the collapse and the, the decline of the bee population, the collapse of, of the colonies. Uh, and our government has started uh, the initiative that now finally um, is, uh, has gone through. Um, last December, uh, the um, uh, General Assembly of the United Nations anonymously declared today as the World Bee Day, and we will celebrate it all around the world. Uh, I think that apart from Slovenia, we have the, 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 the strongest, the biggest, the, the warmest celebrations here in Canada. I'm really grateful. <laughs> Bear with us, we are a small embassy. We didn't expect that much crowd, but we are great improvisers and the good will uh, will, will uh, you taste uh, honey and everything. But I don't want to keep you. Before I, I go and uh, give the final word to the minister um, gentlemen, I just want to say that we've got a lot of supporters. It also shows how, how timely this initiative is. Also, a lot of sponsors <coughs> are all listed here. We are grateful for them and um, uh, to them, and hopefully we will support. They will support us in future, and they will also support uh, the initiative and uh, well, the sustainability. I mean, uh, that's. Uh, that's really, really important if you want to survive um, as a humanity on this earth. Now, Minister, meek gentlemen, your final words, please be so kind to tell us, uh, to say some words to us and then finally launch the first World Bee Day in Canberra and Australia and probably <laughs> Well, thanks very much, Ambassador, and, um, and what a pleasure it is to be here on such a fantastic day, I think. Um, can I also uh, recognise the other ambassadors that are here today from uh, Switzerland and the other embassies as well. It's fantastic to see you here. And thank Paul for his very kind welcome to country. And as Shane said, those very important messages about looking after our environment with the heritage and history that your culture has. 
Uh, and Shane, for his words too, I think he's touched on just about every item I was going to touch on in my speech. Uh, he's done it already. But congratulations to the, to the Ambassador and the Embassy, of course, uh, for the timing of this. So as we go to launch World B-Day, uh, the fog has lifted and the sun has come up for a beautiful canvas, so it's fantastic. I thought I might just touch on a little bit of work that the ACT government uh, has been doing uh, for uh, the bee industry across the ACT and also touch on what you can do as an individual to help mm. our pollinators as well. So uh, the government is actively involved in helping to protect Australia's honeybees. Uh, and in 2014, the ACT published the Code of Practice for beekeeping in residential areas in the ACT. Uh, the code outlines the responsibilities of people who own, care or keep honeybees and provides useful information for amateur backyard beekeepers. And the government works closely with ACT beekeepers and their association to assist in the management of bees in the ACT and provides the association with facilities at Jerobomba Wetlands <coughs> to run training programs for beekeepers. And I've been out there, it's a fantastic uh, opportunity to see the interaction of bees uh, in the native sense uh, and with the beekeepers looking after them as well, but learn about that pollination. And that's what I just wanted to touch on what you can do as individuals. So uh, I'm lucky enough to have a reasonable plot of land uh, in Caldwell, uh, a small house with a nice garden, and I've made a conscious decision to plant native species uh, in my garden, and they're native banksias mostly. So banksia marginata is the key one, uh, and I propagate them every year. So each year the, the adult trees drop their seeds into the soil. The soil is just right, or rather it's uh, sandy soil, it's just right for the banksias, and then I repot them once they've grown to a reasonable stage and give them away at the native plant sale so everybody else can enjoy uh, banksia majoritis in the ACT as well. So while we do that work um, in the Jerobomba wetlands, uh, it runs those training programs for beekeepers. In the event of serious bee disease outbreak, locating beehives and contracting beekeepers promptly is also important. So in 2015, mandatory registration of beekeepers was introduced. Uh, there's no charge to register, and registration can be completed online. I'm pleased to say that the ACT government staff undergo training to help ensure the ACT is well prepared in the case of any serious bee disease outbreak. And last month, the government employees and local beekeepers <coughs> participated in exercise Be Prepared. You knew there was going to be a pun there somewhere. <laughs> uh, it's a biosecurity emergency response exercise. And the exercise showed that if we did detect varroa mites in the ACT, we'd be able to respond very quickly to deal with them. But biosecurity is everybody's responsibility, so I hope today we'll remind you of the importance of bees and motivate you to protect them in your garden, at your school, and in your forests and bushland. <coughs> To those demonstrating and sharing their knowledge on bees, I thank you for your enthusiasm in taking action to preserve and protect our pollinators. And I'm excited to see the many activities occurring in Canberra today to celebrate World Bee Day. This morning's activities are followed by activities at the Embassy of Sweden, Parliament House and the Embassy of Switzerland. The traditional honey breakfast with some honey from the Embassy is looking good. So with much to taste and many busy bee activities, let's go on with the day. Uh, it gives me great pleasure to launch the first World Bee Day here in Canberra. Come in, Shane. Come and help us. Um, there we go. Before you go, I would like to present you with uh, honey from our beehive down there. I can't say that it's only honey from the Amazon Serena because Carmen is actually helping us and she wants to us all the way. But we are learning along the way. Thank you, Carmen. <laughs> This is our honey, <laughs> and the photo is from the um, uh, B and um, um, uh, and <laughs> endings uh, from our embassy. So this is also part of tradition in Slovenia, and we also ask 
uh, an animal painter, Jimmy Bozo, to ask uh, to, to to paint a vampire. And this is the vision of Selena one. Yeah. Wonderful, thank you very thank much. Thank you too, thank you again for being here and for supporting and for doing such a great job in ICT. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Thanks very much. Thank you. Thanks, Carmen. Yeah, yeah, thanks. Thanks again. And Paul. Thank you for taking such a good, good care of the land for the past 60,000 years. I hope that yeah, we should learn, we should learn more. Thank you so much. Um, now, again, please go around. Uh, as I say, uh, our embassy is not a big one, uh, but just, just be all of you in the just enjoy. And you are really, really welcome. Thank you for coming here. Thank you. <laughs> so this is our country. Yeah,